Good morning. Good to see everybody. Y'all are quiet today. My Sunday school class is quiet too. Right? Everybody's tired. Too much. Too many fireworks around the neighborhood for the last few days. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, it's an exciting day. Uh, glad to have you with us. Glad to have any visitors with us. Um, we are a loving, crazy church family. Stick around and you'll figure that out. Um, a few announcements. Our Thrive Youth Gathering tonight will be at the normal time at 6. It's going to be a little bit different. We're going to help with VBS setup, fellowship, eat, whatever God leads us to do tonight. So um, we're still planning to do that. There won't be youth praise band practice at 5, though. No practice at 5. And the reason is because Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow, as you can tell by the set and the lighthouse. That's usually not there, right, Brian? Yeah, so very cool. Looks really good in here, and we're excited about VBS. Not finished, so come back tomorrow night to see it finished. Yeah, it already looks really good, and it's not finished. Um, all right, VBS tomorrow night, and I've been asked and asked and asked. For all of us folks to register online in advance, there's a QR code, um, there is a Facebook link, there is a Mount Moriah website, MMBCHNC, you can register there. It's a lot faster than if you get here on Monday night and get a piece of paper and start writing it down with all the other traffic that's coming through. So if you register online between now and then, your name shows up, your kids' names show up already in the list, ready to go. And that'll be helpful for when our, do, our guests do show up that don't know how to register online or haven't seen a link for them to get in quicker. So thank you for that. And we're excited about VBS. Be praying for VBS. Um, each night it'll start at 5 o'clock as usual with our dinner in the rec building. And then we kick off at 5.45 in here. It's going to be exciting. We're going to say exciting several times today. And then just as a reminder, don't assume anything. No Wednesday night services this week. So VBS will be happening. If you show up on Wednesday night, jump right in with the VBS fun. Uh, there might be some water hoses and fire trucks and craziness. Yes. at the bottom two, like here in the paved part, yeah. So if you're coming and staying, park back here in the gravel further, further back, just the first night, so visitors can come in and register and those kind of things. I uh, try to keep this parking lot free for our visitors to register. Yeah, thank you for that. And if I didn't also mention, there's VBS music here on CDs to take and listen to and get prepared for VBS music. So no Wednesday night services, and Saturday, did we figure out a time? Fun day, what time is the? To be announced, we don't know yet. Saturday will be a fun day at Elberry Llama Farm, and then Sunday, next Sunday, there will be one service. There will be Sunday school on some level, not sure what the kids will be doing in here, so just pay attention to your Sunday school teachers. No early service is the point, no service at 845 next Sunday. What's that? Come early, because the parking lot will be full. Right? And practice your love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. Goodness, did I get them all faithfulness? I missed that one. Yeah, practice all that stuff when you're trying to find a parking spot. And when people are in your parking spot, right? <clears throat> or sitting in your seat in the pew. I'm just joking, uh, sort of. Shoebox collections. We are collecting new stuff for July, composition books and crayons. Everybody has been really faithful in giving. And we're excited to keep uh, taking donations for our shoebox ministry. And then last but not least, the go-getters are going out on Friday, July 19th to Spruce Pine. They're going to see some glass blowing and eating lunch together, leaving here at 10 a.m. And there's a sign-up sheet. Y'all are welcome to come in and sit down. Y'all don't have to stay in the back. Come on in. You can sit. 
No? Okay. Um, all right. Anything else? I've been talking too long. I'm going to mention a few folks for our prayer list. Uh, praying for the Diane Atkinson family. We see your brother Michael here with us praying for you guys. Um, praying for Bill Barnwell. Praying for John and Sandy Lauder. Praying for Jerry and Sylvia Ellis. For Louise Sheehan. Praying for her. Uh, praying for Dinky Pack. Linda Ockard. Praying for Carolyn Janice Jones. Praying for you guys, brother. Praying for Jackie and Lowell Griffin. And Louise Cantrell. I know we each have many folks on our hearts to pray for, and we have unspoken. Y'all stand with me, and let's pray. Father God, we are just excited to be here to worship you, to talk about you, to learn more about you through your word. We thank you, Lord, for our VBS this week. We thank you that we have the opportunity to be a witness not just in what we do, but who we are, to the children, to the families, to the parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles that come around this week who usually may not be here or be around your people. We pray that you help us to love our neighbor in a way that shows them who you are. And that's the whole reason why we're here, to love you and love our neighbors, bring people to you, build your kingdom. And I thank you for our church family who are excited and engaged in doing those things. And we pray that you have your way with us, not just while we're here, but all the time. We pray for the many folks on our prayer list. You know exactly what to do. You know exactly what's going on in all situations. Your goal is to bring each of us closer to you and folks that do not know you to know you and be saved by you. And we are just wonderfully blessed. That's, that's what your business is, and that's what our business is also as your people. And let us be about your business. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all stand and greet each other. Or stand. Sh turn around, shake hands. You know what I mean.
These guys are so good. There's some amazing, amazing musical talent on this stage. You have no idea. And they had it knocked out in 15 minutes. So here we go with the BBS musical. Theme song. It might sound like another song that you know. Yeah. yeah. We, we are not that good. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just because we know a Pat Benatar song that sounds just like it. So <laughs> They are that good. I promise it's not the Pat Benatar song. <laughs> Take your walk along the coast, sailing in your toes. Take it all in, come on, let's go. Break your rock. That's, that's Pat Benatar, I don't care what you say. If we come in next week and they're playing Sweet Home Alabama with Christian lyrics, we'll know what they're up to. Oh, wow. So good to have you here this morning. Thank you for coming. Again, if you're visiting with us, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for being here today. If you brought your word with you, I'd like for you to go to the book of Psalms. Psalm 139, we're going to be looking at verses 14 through 18 in just a few minutes. But before I get into this, I want to ask you a question. Is it okay if we just talk today? No, 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 no preaching. I just want, I just want to talk to you, okay? Uh, have you, have you ever been to a church service and when you leave, you feel like you've been beat up. Anybody? Are, are, are y'all y'all with me today? Because I don't want to do this by myself. Are, are y'all here at church? 
You ever been to a service and after you leave you feel like you've been beat up on? Because if you haven't, you need to pay attention or you need to go to church more often. Okay, because if you don't go to church and feel conviction, then something's wrong. Okay? And I ask you that question because Sunday after Sunday, it seems like that as your pastor, I step on your toes a lot. There's rarely a Sunday that goes by that somebody doesn't say, Brian, man, you, you, you hit me this morning. And that's my job. My job is to stand here on this stage and preach to you. That's my job. Okay? Not that I'm any better than you. I, I tell you all the time, just because I stand up here doesn't mean I'm above you. I need good preaching too. But it seems like Sunday after Sunday, I'm up here preaching to you and I'm telling you, you need to do this, you need to stop doing that, you need to love God with all your heart, you need to treat each other like you want to be treated, quit acting like heathens, and repent of your sin or you're going to go to hell and die. I told you I'm not preaching today though. That, that's how it feels sometimes. But, Every now and again, every great once in a while, I think I need to remind you that you are loved and that you are appreciated. And I'm looking at your faces this morning. You are loved and you are appreciated. And listen, you matter more than you think you matter. Someone walked in those doors this morning, and you're feeling lonely, you're feeling underappreciated, you're feeling unimportant, overlooked, and insignificant. If I'm telling the truth, somebody say amen. You do. Somebody came in here going, who am I? Why do I matter? Why am I even bothering? You know, King David, who had everything that the world had to offer, you know, he felt that way sometimes. He was surrounded by yes men. He was surrounded by material things. He was surrounded by passion. He was surrounded by everything that any of us could ever want. But sometimes he didn't feel like he mattered. King David, the king, felt like he was a nobody. He wrote in Psalm 8, he said, Lord, when I consider everything you have created in this universe, who am I that you would even give me a second thought? He didn't feel like he mattered. But perhaps, just maybe, David's pastor came along one Sunday morning and reminded him just how much he meant to God. Now this sermon isn't for everybody. Now, this is a little preachy right here. Some of you walked through those doors this morning, and I'm not making eye contact with anything but that exit sign right there. Some of you came through here thinking you all that, and you matter more than everybody else. This sermon ain't for you. You know who you are. Your sermon's coming. Hang on. But I want to talk to the person this morning who feels like, man... The world's just going by and I don't even matter. David wrote about this. He wrote about how he knew that he mattered to God. Let's read our verse together here. Psalm 139, verse 14. We're going to take our time and go through it. David says, I will praise thee, Lord, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You know how fearfully and wonderfully made you are? So much so that science cannot describe you. Modern science, you are beyond what science can explain. And that my soul knoweth very well. He said, I know very well how Fearfully and wonderfully I am made. Verse 15, my substance, myself, 
was not hid from thee when I was made in the secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect or unformed. And in thy book all my members were written, which is in continuance, were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Sometimes I read verse 16, I'm like, whoa, what, what? Especially in the King James. I'm going, David, what, 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 are you, what are you saying here? Let me give it to you in Edneville language. Everybody like a little Edneville language this morning? Here, here's what he's saying. He's saying, Lord God, you saw me before I was created. You saw me before I was born. You saw my soul. You saw my life. And every day of my life, you have recorded in your book. You knew me before I was. Isn't that a wonderful thing? How precious also are thy thoughts unto me. O oh God, how great is the sum of them. Listen to me, church. You are always on God's mind. Always. He says, you are constantly on God's mind. How much? He tells us in verse 18. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. More grains than there are sand on the earth is how much. God thinks about you. I came here for one purpose this morning. And that's to tell you that you matter. That you're special. And that you're somebody in God's eyes. Can anybody say amen in church today? Again, this isn't for everybody. But somebody in here needs to hear this today. Now I want to give you a few things to consider. About you matter. Okay, number one, you matter because God made you. Everybody say, God made me. One more time, God made me. The scripture says here that you were fearfully and wonderfully made by the hands of God. God formed you before you were born. You were a person before you were born a soul a spirit you were recreated in his image you are the apple of his eye the bible says that you are god's crowning glory his creation his masterpiece god has blessed me church to do a little bit of traveling not as much as a lot of you but a little bit and I've seen some beautiful things. You've heard me tell this before. I remember standing on the rim of the Grand Canyon with Tammy and our two young sons. And we're just, we, we can't believe what we're seeing. I, I, I mean, this, this, this is tear-inspiring stuff. God's creation. And you go, Lord, how did you do this? This is so, it's awe-inspiring. But then he whispers in your ear, you're my greatest creation. You're my greatest creation, my masterpiece. You were made by God's hands. When I was in college, even though it wasn't part of my major, I had to take two semesters of science. Okay, I went to a liberal arts university, which means you had to be well-rounded. You studied other things besides what was your major. Okay? So I had to take two semesters of science. Everybody say science. science. And I had a choice. I could take physics. I don't think so. I could take chemistry. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Or there was one more. Anybody want to guess what it was? Biology. I could take biology. Well, in high school, I could dissect a frog in Mr. Bradley's class without throwing up. So biology it was. That's what we're going to do. We're going to study biology. On the very first day of class, we were introduced to a place called the Galapagos Islands. 
Anybody know what the story is behind the Galapagos Islands? Darwin. It's, that's, that's where Charles Darwin formulated his theory of evolution. Okay? So for the next two semesters, one full year of school, I was taught that I evolved, that I just happened, and that I am a simple accident that occurred by chance. Okay? Now, 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 now church, hear, hear, hear what I'm about to say. Okay? I did not evolve. I was created. Amen. I do not care what people say. <laughs> I don't care about opinions. Modern society, modern culture, I do not care. You were created. Amen. You did not evolve from a single cell organism. I was blessed. I was fortunate in that growing up in this little church in Edneyville, North Carolina, I could go to my university and I could hear this stuff and I could go through it, do my thing, and not absorb it. I was one of the few. There were many that didn't have the foundation that I was blessed to have. And they bought it. They ate it up. Yes, I'm evolved. I came from an ape, which came from this, which came from that. That's a whole different sermon. But let me tell you this, church. There's about 8 billion of us on this planet, and not one of us is an accident. Not one of us is here just by chance. Some of us may have been unplanned, Or even unwanted. But none of us are here by accident. None of us. Listen. Everything God does, He has a purpose for. And God does not make mistakes. You may have been told growing up. You may have been told at your university or your school or wherever. That you were an accident. That you just happened to be here. Make the best of what you got. No. God has a plan and a purpose for you. Just for you. There are unplanned births, but there are no unplanned people. God wanted you here for a reason. Listen, the Bible says that God knew you before He created this world, and He has a plan and a purpose for you. He created you to do something that only you can do. Only you can do. There are things that I can't do, but Linda can. Things I can't do in this church, but Ryan can. Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow evening. There's going to be children here. I hope there's a bunch. I hope there is so many kids here that you leaders and you teachers have to pray. <laughs> I hope there's so many. I hope there's so many that you leaders come to me and go, Brian, what are we going to do? And I'm going to say, we're going to love them is what we're going to do. But these kids are going to come to you, leaders and teachers and people who are working around here, and they're going to have questions and they're going to ask you, I want to know Jesus. Tell me about Jesus. And listen to me. Your inclination is going to be, let, 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 let's, let's find Pastor, Pastor Brian or Pastor David and let him talk. No, 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 no. These kids, a lot of them won't listen to the pastor. But they will listen to you. Why? Because God not only created you, he created you for this moment, for this child, for this situation, at this time, to tell them about him. I can't do it. It's meant for you to do it. I see a lot of you sitting here with, with, with children and young children. And, and, and you bring them to church and we're so glad you do. And you want them to find Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But they may not find Jesus here at this church. They may be looking for him at the house. 
And only you can lead them to the Lord. Only you can, can lead your neighbor to the Lord. Only you can do certain things. God made you for that purpose. Isn't that wonderful? That God knows us so individually that He put us here to do something. We're not just... Wouldn't you... Listen, wouldn't you hate to be atheist? And, and just... Well, I'm just here. I'm just, I'm just floating through this universe. And when I die, I die. I really have no purpose. Except to accumulate stuff and, you know, do... The, no. God put you here for a reason. Folks, don't let anybody ever convince you that you are a nobody or that you don't matter. Because you do. You are somebody. You do matter because God made you. God made you. That's the first thing I want you to consider this morning. God made you. Number two, you matter even when you mess up. Has anybody in here ever messed up? Amen. The sheriff admits it. Anybody else? A few, a few of us? If ever a hand don't go up in here right now, I'm going to preach another 30 minutes. <laughs> we all fall short of the glory of God. We have all messed up, made mistakes. Blew it. Every one of us. A man by the name of Thomas J. Watson, he found a little company you might be familiar with called IBM decades and decades ago. He ran that company for 40 years. He hired a young man, one of his junior executives, to help expand the company, grow the business, do this. Well, this junior executive lost the company $10 million on one deal. Now, $10 million is a lot of money today, but back then, that was a bunch of money. This young man was called to Mr. Watson's office, and the young man, knowing that his career was over, walked into Mr. Watson's office, and he was visibly shaking. He knew it was over. He walked in the door, and before Mr. Watson, his boss, could even speak, he said, Mr. Watson, I'm sorry, I'll prepare my resignation. Mr. Watson replied, are you serious? We just spent $10 million training you. <laughs> We're not letting you go anywhere. For all of you that feel like, man, I failed, I've messed up, there's no way God can let... Listen, God has used all your mistakes, all your blunders, all your sinfulness to build you up so he can use you and mold you and make you more like Jesus Christ. And do something with you. God never gives up on his people. Let me ask you again. Anybody in here ever messed up? Yeah, me too. But God loves me. And he uses me. And he's going to use my mistakes to help me be who he wants me to be. No matter how badly we've messed up in the past... God still loves us. And listen, God still wants to do wonderful, great, miraculous, incredible things with you, for you, and in you. Amen? So if you walk through those doors today and you feel like, man, there's no way. I've messed up so badly. My sin is so great. I can't matter to God. You matter more to God than you'll ever know. Church, you've heard me say this before. Please hear me say it one more time. You can even write this down. It's so good. It didn't come from me. Failure is an event, not a person. Failure is an event. It's not a person. We may have failed. We may have messed up. We may have crashed and burned, whatever you want to call it. But we're not failures until we quit trying. If you quit in the midst of your failing, then you can become a failure. But you keep going. I can't tell you how many times God has picked me up and dusted me off and said, okay, son, keep going. Don't quit. Let's don't quit on him. Let's don't quit on life. Let's don't quit on each other. 
keep going. We talked about this last week. We talked about the Apostle Peter. Peter, uh, man, he, he failed, didn't he? He messed up big time. He was with Jesus in the inner circle. And he told Jesus, he said, I'll never fail you. I'll never, I'll never let you down. They come and arrested Jesus. They started questioning everybody. Peter didn't do it just once. He did it how many times? Three times. He said, I don't even know this guy. I don't even know him. Peter failed. He messed up. Three times. I don't even know this man. But in spite of his mistake, God still loved him. And God used him two months later to preach a sermon where 3,000 people got saved. Isn't that wonderful? You matter to God even when you mess up. Anybody in here got a past? Junk in, you know, junk in your closet? I almost said junk in your trunk, but that'd been personal, wouldn't it? <laughs> Some of y'all do. You know. <laughs> Again, that's a different sermon for another day. We, but we all have a past. We all have some, what, do, what do I tell you about your past? Don't know two people interested in it. The devil and your nosy neighbor. That's it. God doesn't care. He will use your past, in fact, to help you make a better future. To serve him. So anybody walked in here with a past, something that you just know you can't be forgiven for, you just can't get over, Listen. The devil's the one that keeps reminding you of that. It's not God. God's ready to move on whenever you are. Amen. Number three, you matter to God even when you don't matter to others. You matter to God even when you don't matter to others. Anyone here ever felt unappreciated? Maybe you've Worked real hard at your job, and somebody else always seems to get the promotion. Maybe you're killing yourself in your home or your marriage, and your spouse is ungrateful or doesn't care. I, I don't mean to be so personal. I just, I'm just talking this morning, not preaching. Maybe you feel forgotten. Maybe you've worked real hard here at the church and you've really tried and, and nobody even said thank you. Maybe you were left out. Anybody ever here been neglected? Just, yeah. Maybe you didn't come from the right family. Maybe you didn't graduate from the right school. Maybe you don't drive the right car or hang with the right crowd. Maybe people just don't understand you. People just don't get you. You know, that's okay. You're in good company. Jesus felt the same way. He was abandoned, forgotten, basically thrown away. I'm just talking. Jesus knew all that. But listen to this. No one is ordinary. Amen? Especially here at Mount Moriah. Ain't no ordinary of y'all are <laughs> extraordinary. Nobody here is unimportant. Nobody here is insignificant, especially in God's eyes. God loves you. Can I get personal with you for a minute? I'm about, I'm about to close. Get you out here early today. I want to tell you three things. Number one, you, you matter to me. You matter to me. You... Uh, you don't realize what you mean to your pastor. I wouldn't be who I am without you. I wouldn't be where I am without you. From Bill to Greg and everyone in between, I need you. You're, you're my family. A amen? 
Now, you, some of you are going, well, Brian, you don't even know me. You don't even know my name. That, that's okay. You're needed. You make life what it is. I, I, in the first service, I, I spoke about a few people. And I, I could do it in this service, too. Uh, just, just how special some, some of you are. Like Robert Griffin. Robert, you, you're, you're the chief of the fire department here in Edneyville. And, and the way you handle yourself, the example you set for me. He comes to our church. I'm his pastor, but I also serve on the board. And, and when this man talks, it's, it's with wisdom and reverence. And man, thank you, brother. I wouldn't be who I am without you Carol Jones I watch how you I watch how you take care of your wife I wouldn't be who I am without your example Jackie Morgan you're absolutely crazy <laughs> what Amen. <laughs> I have known this man since I was a child. I, I have. His, his dad helped build my grandparents' house. Yeah. And, man, I've, I've watched him over the years, and I've watched him fall in love with the Lord because he knew me when I didn't know. I wouldn't be who I am without this man. And of course, this one over here. The big brother I never had or wanted. <laughs> the Lord says, here you are. Here you are, Brian. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to give you a big brother. And I went, can we do better? Can we... <laughs> As your pastor, I want to, now I can do that with most everybody in here. Thank you for being who you are in my life. You matter. Number two, you matter to your church. You matter to your church. Your church is what you make it. And word on the street is that Mount Moriah is a pretty good place to be. I watch you people. This week is going to be awesome. Vacation Bible School. That's when our church, man, you guys shine. Amen. There's a lot of Vacation Bible Schools out there, and I know they're great. They're fantabulous. But if you ain't ever been to a Mount Moriah Vacation Bible School, you're missing it. You need to come out. It's, it, it, it's incredible. But it's because you... Put your faith in to the Lord and into the church. I see it all the time. We, we, we were here Wednesday night. The Lord, Lord just, just showed me. We, we were here Wednesday night. And, 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 I, and we're doing apologetics. And I encourage you to come out. That, that's a great study. We're having a good time with it. Learning a lot about the Lord and about our, ourselves. And, uh, but this particular past Wednesday night, I didn't want to start something new because we're not going to be here this week. And so I told Tammy, I said, Tammy, let, let's just treat the people. Let's just love on them. Let, let's just get us some big chocolate chip cookies, you know, and some ice cream. And, and she was like, uh, Brian, it's, it's, it's like church starts in 40 minutes. Well, well, you know, but her being a good sport, we go out, we, we get this stuff. She says, I'm going to need help putting this all together. And I said, they'll show up. I said, just hang on. They'll show up. I, I walk out. There's Kim Lance. Cutting cookies, serving ice cream. Just, Sister, you make your church what it is. Thank you. You matter. You matter. 
Let's warn him too. But number three, and this is the biggest one of all, we're going to go home now. You matter to God. That's the big one. You matter to God. All you young, if, you, if you're under the age of 20, raise your hand right now. Jackie, put your hand down. <laughs> I didn't say 20 times 5, brother. <laughs> if you're under 20, raise your hand. I mean, if you're really proud of being young, right, right, there you go. Look at there. Look at there. That, that is wonderful. You're in schools. You're going to universities. You're, you're, you're doing this thing. And you, you live in a culture that's going to tell you there is no God or God doesn't matter. God doesn't care. That's a lie straight from hell. You matter to God individually. You're not just a face in the crowd, young people. You belong to God. And you old people, I won't leave you out. You belong to God and He loves you. Verses 17 and 18 says this. God can't take His mind off of you. Do you know that today? Now, let me say one more thing. And this wasn't in my notes. This is just something God impressed upon me in the first service, and we'll share it with this one. We're talking about Vacation Bible School. We're going to have kids here this week that are not church kids. Y'all understand what I'm saying? They were not raised in church. They don't know what, they don't know how we behave. When I see all these kids that just raise their hand, I know that when they come into church, they've come to church long enough. They, they know what they're doing. Okay? But you're going to have kids here this week. They didn't grow up in your home. They didn't grow up in this church. And they're not going to know how to behave. And some of them, to some of us, are going to be a bother. They're going to be a handful. However you want to put it. But folks, let me tell you something. They matter to God as much as our kids do. Amen? They matter. So I want you to approach this week prayerfully, just begging God, Lord, send one of them children my way. Send their parents my way. Send somebody my way that I can just tell them about Jesus. Amen. Amen. We say we go to the house. If you would, stand up. KK, come on up. Play us something pretty for just a minute. If you need to come to the altar today for any reason, maybe you need to rededicate your life, maybe life has overwhelmed you, you just need to come and pray. Come on up. Maybe you, hey, maybe something wonderful's happening and you just want to come up and you want to get on your knees and you want to thank God for it. Come on up. Perhaps you're here today and you don't know this Jesus that you matter to. If you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, your friend, come to me. I would love to pray with you to accept Christ today. Amen. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes as Michaela plays softly. If anyone needs to come to the altar, please come at this time. Lord Father, we love you today. We thank you. Thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. Thank you for providing for us and protecting. Thank you for taking care of us, Lord Father. And Lord, we thank you that we're not accidents and that we matter to you. Father, I feel like David in the Psalms. Who am I? Who am I, Lord, that you would even give me a second thought? But through Jesus Christ, I know who I am to you. I am someone that you formed that you planned, that you wanted, that you have a purpose for. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray for each and every person here today. Every person, every family, every home. We love you, Father. 
We thank you so much. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Does anybody have any praise left in their hearts?